All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I am Sanjay Mattu. The headlines. Electioneering picks up for the first phase of assembly elections in Chhattisgarh. Congress releases first list of 155 candidates for Madhya Pradesh assembly polls. Two terrorists killed in an encounter in Shopian district of Jammu and Kashmir. Prohibitory orders imposed around Ayyappa Temple in Shabarimala in view of tomorrow's puja. In tennis, Novak Djokovic beats Roger Federer to enter Paris Masters final. And in cricket, first T20 of three match series between India and the West Indies to be played in Kolkata this evening. In Chhattisgarh, electioneering has gained momentum in 18 constituencies which go to the polls in the first phase on the 12th of this month. Star campaigners of various parties are touring Bastar and Rajnandgaon areas to garner support for their candidates. More from our correspondent. Campaigning has intensified for the first phase of polling in Chhattisgarh. BJP President Amit Shah will today address three election meetings in a row in Kheragarh, Khujji and Kondagaon assembly segments. Bhaujan Samaj Party Chief Mayawati will also address public meeting today at Akaltara and Ambikapur to canvas support for her party candidates. Congress star campaigner Raj Babbar yesterday visited Chhattisgarh and addressed public meeting at Rajnandgaon. Out of the 18 constituencies which are going for poll in first phase, 12 are in Bastar Division and 6 are in Rajnandgaon district. Most of these constituencies are affected by left-wing extremism. Vikal Pushukla, AIR News, Raipur. Chhattisgarh has a total of 90 constituencies. Scrutiny of nominations for the second phase was held yesterday. The last day for withdrawal of candidature is tomorrow. 72 seats will go to the polls in the second phase on the 20th. The Congress has released its first list of 155 candidates for Madhya Pradesh Assembly elections. More from our Bhopal correspondent. After days of intense deliberations and speculations, the Congress released the first list of 155 candidates. The Congress has also given tickets to several relatives of senior party leaders. Veteran Congress leader and former Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh, Digvijay Singh's brother and son have been included in the list of candidates. Digvijay Singh's son, Jaiwardhan Singh, has been given ticket from Ragogarh, while his brother Lakshman Singh will contest from the Chachwala seat. Another former Chief Minister Arjun Singh son Ajay Singh has been picked up to contest the election from Churhat seat. The party denied ticket to three MLAs and repeated around 90% candidates of the 2013 Assembly elections. Sanjeev Sharma, AIA News, Bhopal. The ruling BJP has already declared 177 candidates in its first list. Polling for 230 seats of the Madhya Pradesh Assembly will be held on the 28th of this month. 59 nominations have so far been filed. In Jammu and Kashmir, two terrorists were killed in an encounter with security forces at Khudpura village in Shopian district last night. The gunfight raged after the forces launched a cordon and search operation following information about a group of terrorists hiding in the village. As the forces zeroed in, the terrorists fired, triggering an encounter. Talking to AIR, State DGP Dilbag Singh said, शोपिया जिले में कुछ मिलिटेंट्स की एक पनागा पे शुभे होने की खबर पुलिस को मिली थी जिसके ऊपर पुलिस और फोर्सेस ने मिलकर के एक ऑपरेशन लॉन्च किया था पिछली रात इस ऑपरेशन में मिलिटेंट दो से तीन होने की खबर थी इस वक्त बाकी एरिया की सर्चेस जारी है The enforcement directorate has filed a charge sheet against a former district magistrate of Patna and five others in connection with the 130 crore rupee National Rural Health Mission Scam that was unearthed in 2008. The charge sheet was filed in a special court set up under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002 at Ranchi. The CBI had filed its charge sheet in the case in 2012. In Kerala, prohibitory orders have been imposed around the Ayyappa Temple in Shabarimala. The shrine is all set to open for a day's puja tomorrow. The orders have been issued to prevent any untoward incident in the wake of the recent Supreme Court order allowing women of all age groups to enter the temple. Police said the temple premises will be under heavy security cover in the backdrop of the violent protests witnessed last month. Around 1,850 police officers, including commanders, have been deployed at Shabarimala and nearby areas. 
Patanamakitta District SP T. Narayanan said, no one will be allowed to remain in the pathway that leads to the temple. Restrictions have also been imposed for the media and they'll only be allowed to reach the temple's town tomorrow. The orders will be effective till Tuesday. The Bihar Cabinet has approved the redevelopment of Patna Medical College and Hospital into the world's largest 5,462-bed hospital. The decision was taken at a meeting chaired by Chief Minister Nitish Kumar in Patna. The hospital will be redeveloped by the Bihar Bihar Medical Services and Infrastructure Corporation Limited at a cost of around 5,500 crore rupees. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, run the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. You can also log on to our website, newsonair.nic.in. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said, India and Zimbabwe must work harder to progress together and forge partnerships for a mutually beneficial, brighter future. Mr. Naidu was addressing the India-Zimbabwe Business Forum in Harare last evening. He urged the captains of industry of both the countries to tap the natural synergies and complementarities between the two economies and use them for mutual benefit. The Vice President said, Zimbabwean companies can take advantage of the current high growth trajectory of the Indian economy. India is on the move. The entire world has recognized and they are all now willing and trying and also doing business with India. Indian companies could form partnership in Zimbabwe both for the domestic economy and for the wider southern African development community. The Vice President expressed dissatisfaction over the below potential bilateral trade between the two countries. He highlighted key areas with potential for two-way trade and investment, including mining, information and communication technology, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, defense production, infrastructure and tourism. About six business-to-business MOUs were also signed at the forum. Today, Mr. Naidu will attend the groundbreaking ceremony of the Indian Chancery Building in Harare. The Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana is proving to be beneficial for farmers across Gujarat. Farmers from Nadmada district have availed of the benefits of the scheme. Here's a ground report from our Ahmedabad correspondent. Narmada district of Gujarat is a tribal populated area and most of farmers here are dependent on natural farming. But now more than 200 farmers of Narmada district have taken benefit from the Pradhan Mantri Bhima Fasal Yojana and they had also applied online for this. Kanchan Bhai Bariya, a farmer of Fatehpura village of Tilakwada Tehsil, told that he had also applied online. Mere trustee se Pradhan Mantri Bhima Fasal Yojana kaafi faida karak hai. Mene mere गांव फतेहपुरा से कपास और केले दोनों बीमा के लिए ऑनलाइन अर्जी की है कम बारिश होती है तो भी नुकसान जाती है और ज्यादा बारिश होती है तो भी नुकसान जाती है लोगों को गुजारिश करता हूं कि सभी प्रधानमंत्री बीमा योजना का लाभ लो like Kanchan Bhai Bariya, many tribal farmers here have applied online for Pradhan Mantri Bima Fasal Yojana. They say that this scheme is truly a blessing for the farmers. Bharat Devmani, AIR News, Ahmedabad. In Himachal Pradesh, snowfall in the higher reaches and rain across the state have lowered the mercury by several notches in the state. Shimla and Manali witnessed rains, while other hill stations like Kalpa and Chitkul in Kinnor district and Kelong in Lahol Spiti received the season's first snowfall. Under the Clean Air campaign, around 80 lakh rupees penalty was imposed on violators in the last two days by teams deployed to monitor implementation of measures to combat pollution in Delhi NCR. In a statement, the Central Pollution Control Board, or CPCB, said, the teams are visiting different parts of Delhi and adjacent towns of Faridabad, Gurugram, Ghaziabad and Noida. It said the highest number of complaints were related to illegal construction and demolition activities. In Syria, at least 14 civilians were killed in US-led coalition airstrikes on the Islamic State terror group's last holdout in eastern Dar Ezer province. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said at least nine terrorists were also killed in the air raids on the villages of Hajin, Susa and Al-Shafa. The Britain-based monitor said the death toll is likely to rise due to the number of seriously injured. The observatory said the strikes on the area intensified following an attempted terror attack on a coalition base in the nearby village of Al-Bahra. 
Russia has said the reimposition of all U.S. sanctions on Iran is dealing another powerful blow to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The Russian Foreign Ministry said in a statement that a new round of anti-Iran sanctions announced by Washington is aimed at undermining the consistent efforts by the parties to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action to preserve that deal. The statement said Moscow rejects any unilateral extraterritorial sanctions bypassing the UN Security Council's decisions and affecting third countries' interests, as was the case with Washington's restrictive measures against Iran. And now, news from the world of sports. In tennis, Novak Djokovic defeated Roger Federer in a thrilling three-setter last night to seal a place in the final of the Paris Masters. The world number two have got the better of the third-seeded Swiss 7-6-5-7-7-6 in a match that lasted for a little over three hours. Djokovic, now unbeaten in 22 matches, will face Russia's Karen Kachanov for the title today. Kachanov had a stunned six-seeded Austrian Dominic Thiem 6-4-6-1 in the other semi-final. Djokovic is a four-time winner of the Paris Masters and a win today will see him draw level with current world number one Spence Rafael Nadal on 33 career Masters titles. In cricket, the first 2020 international between India and the West Indies will be played at the Eden Garden in Kolkata this evening. The match will begin at 7 p.m. After registering comprehensive victories against the Windies in the Test and ODI series, an upbeat team India will look to continue their winning momentum in the shortest format as well. In badminton, India, Subhankar Day has entered the men's single finals of the Zarlo Lux Open in Germany. In the semi-finals, last night, Subhankar defeated China's Peng Boren 21-18, 11-21, 24-22 to book a place in the Summit clash. He will face fifth seeded Britain Raju Osaf in the final today. This is Ritha Srivastava, Sports Desk. And now for a look at today's newspapers for the major stories, it's over to Saira Mujtaba. Thank you, Sanjay. The Congress Party's petition in the Supreme Court challenging the center's decision to send CBI Director Alok Varma on forced leave dominates front page headlines. The Pioneer reports Kharge moves Supreme Court over Alok Varma. Says CBC or government can't curtail CBI chief's tenure, sending him on forced leave illegal arbitrary. Army Chief General Bipin Rawat's comments at a seminar on internal security in Delhi are widely reported in the press. The Hindustan Times quotes the Army Chief as saying, Attempts to revive Punjab insurgency through external links. Highlighting the urgency with General Rawat flagged in his comments, the Times of India reports him as saying, Have to act on Punjab terror bid or it will be too late. On the issue of the construction of a Ram temple in Ayodhya, the DNA lead says, Clamour for Ram Mandir intensifies. UP to erect 151-meter statue of Lord Ram near Saryu River. Drawing attention to a two-day gathering of Hindu sons in Delhi, the Times of India quotes them as saying, Ram temple cannot be left to judiciary's mercy. All the papers report on the killing of a tigress named T1 or Avni. The Asian Age writes, Man-eater tigress who claimed 13 lives finally killed. The Times of India draws attention to the anger expressed by wildlife activists to this killing as it quotes them as saying, Tigress killing was fake encounter. With pollution concerns rising in the national capital as Diwali approaches, the Hindustan Times quotes the Delhi police as saying, Nobody has a license to sell crackers. The DNA informs, Cops register first FIR for use of crackers after Supreme Court ban. On the economic front, in a special report, the Hindustan Times reports, government may give soft to workers in push to reform labor laws. And finally, a very novel effort to preserve the environment by an island nation in the Western Pacific. The Hindu reports, Palau becomes first country to ban sunscreen to save coral reefs. An estimated 14,000 tons of lotion ends up in the world's oceans each year. And with that, it's back to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Saira. That was a look at today's newspapers. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Electioneering picks up for the first phase of assembly elections in Chhattisgarh. Congress releases first list of 155 candidates for Madhya Pradesh assembly polls. Two terrorists killed in an encounter in Shopian district of Jammu and Kashmir. Prohibitory orders imposed around Ayyappa Temple in Shabarimala in view of tomorrow's puja. In tennis, Novak Djokovic beats Roger Federer to enter Paris Masters final. And in cricket, first T20 of three match series between India and the West Indies to be played in Kolkata this evening. And for details of these stories and more, log on to our website, newsonair.nic.in. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.